in Madison County years ago when the asbestos docket began, there was a very brilliant man uh, named Charles Chapman who was later an appellate court judge and who's now retired. And Charlie actually set up our asbestos docket. There were approximately 5,000 cases on our docket. Now, um, most of those are on the registry. Uh, they, are, they are special closed files because it's someone who has been found to have asbestos uh, in their lungs, perhaps, or some pleural thickening, but they are not uh, on the active docket. We set approximately 500 cases for trial each year. And uh, those are all either living mesothelioma cases or uh, they might be deceased if persons who were set for trial before or they have a, an affidavit of hardship. Each plaintiff's firm, <clears throat> excuse me, is given uh, a number of dates, trial dates, uh, when we have jurors. And it depends upon the number of cases that they have on file. They get together, all the plaintiff's firms and all the defense attorneys get together and actually do this work for me. I don't, I don't have to set these dates. They, they all get together and figure out what are going to be the appropriate number of dates, trial dates for each firm. Uh, I've tried only three or four asbestos cases. And I've given a, passed off a couple to, uh, to some associate judges that, that I have at my disposal that can try a case when I need them to. But I hear all the motions. And just about every other Friday, <coughs> excuse me, we have a motion docket. So I take care of all the motions. Then I have special settings almost daily for forum nonconvenience motions and summary judgment motions. Frequently, they're not heard. Uh, often the, the plaintiffs and the defendants will get together and they'll come up and they'll say, Judge, we have, we have set this in, in, in a timely manner, but we've agreed to continue it uh, on the basis that timeliness will not be an issue when, if, we, if we get to argue it. And, uh, and so I usually allow that. We have a standing order that Charlie set up. That order was somewhat agreed upon by all of the plaintiffs and defense lawyers who were involved back then. Uh, some of the things were imposed by him, and, but for the most part, all the attorneys get together and, and really work together to, to figure out what's an appropriate means for timing for discovery and timing for the taking of depositions and so on. Uh, I, I get frequent requests for the taking of depositions for someone who is, is uh, dying. And uh, they want to go and take that evidence, the discovery and evidence depositions before the person passes away. And most of the attorneys agree that anyone who appears, because frequently defense attorneys appear for a defendant who hasn't been served yet, but everyone stipulates that no one is going to waive any objections to venue, to jurisdiction, uh, or any other objection they might have by appearing at, at the, uh, the deposition. In any event, most of my cases are settled. Uh, it seems like uh, every time we get a trial docket, there, there are usually, uh, well, there used to be 25, I think, and now we're down to 16 uh, on every trial docket. Uh, everybody comes up. The first day, I don't keep any jurors the first day. I let them go home. Um, on the second day, usually by Tuesday, we have some idea how many defendants are left and we might pass out a questionnaire uh, to the jurors and let them fill out the questionnaire and then let them go home because both sides want the opportunity to look at the questionnaires before they even begin jury selection. Generally, by the third day, the jurors don't have to come back. The cases are settled. So I, I'm not involved in, in negotiating settlements. I have mediated one case. It took days uh, because no one with any authority was there. Uh, <laughs> But it, 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 it really sort of runs itself. I, I can't take any credit for it, but, but we do resolve a, a large number of cases in Madison County. Thank you. Thank you.